Hi, I'm Joni Patree and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today we're going to be talking about the month of December, the last month here in the year of 2024. And boy, has it been a roller coaster year. Now we're coming to the conclusion and so much is going to be happening this month again. There are so many dates and events astrologically. You're going to have to stick with me to hear me out on all that we're going to be experiencing this month because we are finally over the presidential election in the United States. That really did consume most of my videos for one. <laughs> mainly because, I mean, people want to know. So I have to deliver what the people want videos on. And so much has happened, but now we can sort of like get ready for the readjustment. So many things are about to change and so many things will change because here is what's up. The elections, no matter who or what side or who you voted for, the people of the United States obviously wanted a change. Because if you elect the same people that are running the country, then that essentially means things won't change that much. But when you elect the opposing party, this represents change. And I think this is what people, the majority of the people wanted. And, you know, the core essence of what people wanted was a change in the economy because things were not going so well. I don't care what the, uh, what the media has been telling us, people have field, felt the stress on their pocketbooks and that's what motivated most of the vote. Now, here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about going forward, what we can expect and how we can prepare for the readjustment that's coming. And more than anything, my prayer has always been to bring people together to heal because there's been so much polarization, separation, problems with people being at odds with each other. And I have to say the media was the core essence that was causing most of this distress because they are using verbiage that is really, in my opinion, outrageous. So, we won't get into all of that. We all know what's been going on. We, we heard it, we saw it. I don't have to reiterate what the media and everyone's been talking about throughout this whole election. But here's what I think. Everything happens for a reason. And I must say, Trump coming into office in 2016 ignited something about a huge change. And what I always say about Trump, like him or not, he's a catalyst for change. He brought out things that no one would say. He would say the things that sometimes people thought but were afraid to say. I mean, he was ridiculously out there. So then people pulled back and there's a reason why Biden was elected and had to spend four years in office because I believe it really did bring out the truth that we can see now. And I won't go into all of that. I think you guys pretty much know. But before I go any further, I want to remind everyone, if you would like to have my predictions delivered to your email address free sign up for my free newsletter go to galacticcenter.org sign up for my free newsletter 
you will get my predictions weekly and while you're there also check out my patreon page this is a growing spiritual community where i have live classes i have videos that i can only put up on my patreon because i don't think it should be a video that would be suitable on youtube so if you want to get into the know find out the truth from me and become part of my spiritual community check out my patreon page you can find that on galacticcenter.org and all the things that you will get as being a member furthermore don't forget about my galactic planner this is an amazing tool. I am so proud that I created this. This is where it's going to calculate your personal chart and will send all your personal predictions based on your chart to your calendar on your phone or your computer. Every day you can get predictions that you can live by the stars. And I wrote these predictions, so it's not AI. Go to galacticplanner.com, try it out. I promise you, you will love it. Okay, so let's get going and let's start talking about all the predictions that I have for this month. Oh, and one more thing I do want to add to this. I am going to be doing my prediction day, December 14th, which is an all day workshop giving all of my predictions for 2025. You won't want to miss it. All of this, you can find this on my website, galacticcenter.org. Okay, get going. What do I see this month? So as I said, there are so many things, everything happens for a divine reason and everything is surfacing. I've been saying this for so long, I'm blue in the face, that the truth is being revealed. And I know a lot of you got tired of me saying it, but it is true. Every single month, it seems like a little bit more is revealed a little bit more. Well, let me tell you in 2025, the cat's out of the bag completely. And we're going to find some things out that we've been wanting to know for so long. Well, one thing about Kennedy's assassination, mark my words, Trump and Robert Kennedy have news for us in these areas. So, so many things will be revealed. Finally, truth is coming out. So everything happens for a reason and everything happens when the timing's right. And now it is all here and it's all happening. Now, a lot of you are wondering about the economy. Here is my prediction with the economy. Yes, it's going to be going haywire. There will be highs and there will be lows, but unlike ever before. But one thing I can assure you, Mark my words, by a year from now, I'm looking at October to December of 2025, we're going to have a golden age. We're going to have where the economy is back on track. Things will be normalized. Things will be prosperous. There will be so many opportunities. And I state this firmly because transiting Jupiter during those two and a half months will move into the sign of cancer, but only briefly because it's going to station at zero degrees of cancer at that time. This is the most powerful sign Jupiter can be in. It's exalted. And this means that the power of Jupiter comes alive with all of its positive, powerful qualities of optimism, of truth finding, of most of all prosperity and opportunities. This is Jupiter. But most of all, my favorite thing about it is there will be a spiritual awareness that occur that's occurring because Jupiter in Cancer is about philosophy, spirituality, and coming to the truth 
of all that is. So you're going to find that this year is going to be extraordinarily eventful, 2025. But let me just say this, this month is going to be extraordinary. So, but no matter what's happening, I'm telling you, we're all going to end in, in a great event. Because here's another thing, which is so interesting. That is the position of Donald Trump's natal Saturn. And this means that he will have the opportunity to prove what he's been saying about changing the United States, making it better, and most of all, getting the economy back. That was why people wanted him back in office, period. He's a businessman. Like it or not, this was what really changed, I think, the whole, the whole politics that, you know, bottom line, they say follow the money, right? And people don't like to be lied to. Number two, number one, number two, people don't like to be lied to. And what I think people are starting to discover is they've been lied to by the media and the government. It's becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. Mark my words. Now, let's continue on with all of the events that are happening in December. Here is something that's fascinating. Over the course of the recent past, the new moons were always occurring at the degree of 29 degrees. Now, starting in December, the full moon will be occurring for the next six months at 29 degrees. Why is this important? It is really important because this is the last degree of the zodiac, well, of a sign. And when we have the new moon or the full moon here, it represents the end of something, the end of an era, and it means we're approaching something brand new. 29 degrees in Western astrology, they call it the anoretic degree. Very fateful and meaningful. In Vedic astrology, which I am a Vedic astrologer, by the way, I am talking about Vedic sidereal positions in case you're just following me for the first time. But the 29 degree marking represents a planet that's come to its ultimate maturity, which means wisdom, maturity, and fruition, and completion. That's what's happening. So getting back to the new moon, on December 1st, we have a new moon. On December 30th, we have a new moon. And this is called the dark or the black moon, when you have two new moons in a month. And it doesn't happen that often. So when you have the full moon, two of them in a month, it's called a blue moon, but this is the black moon. And this is something imperative that is huge, that is a new beginning, right? Now this new moon that occurs December 1st, will be at 15 degrees of Scorpio. And this is really, really important because this 15 degree of Scorpio is the degree of the fixed star Antares. Antares sits at 15, 16 degrees of Scorpio and exactly opposed Antares is the fixed star Aldebaran. So this Scorpio-Taurus axis is so meaningful, but Antares is known as the star of war. It is one of the most powerful fixed stars that deal with leadership, courage. It is the scorpion and its full force, which deals with emotion and passion, but most of all, this can bring danger and war and upsets. And it goes to prove that I think if anything is going to be happening warlike, it may 
be more likely to occur before Trump gets into the presidency because the United States is not ready. That's just an opinion right there. But this star is pivotal. And not only is this star per, per, so pertinent, I can't even believe that we have the new moon there. The next thing that we have is right after that, on December 6th and 7th, we have Mars turning retrograde. And Mars turns retrograde once every two years, but the sign it's in is imperative as to tell us what's going on. And Mars is going to turn retrograde around 11, 12 degrees of Cancer. Now, the signs are so important because Cancer is the worst sign Mars can be in. It's its debilitation sign. So it brings out the negative forces of Mars. What is Mars all about? Well, just like Mars rules Scorpio and war and violence. Mars rules violence, war, anger. There is so much brewing anger that's undercurrents from those that felt like they lost the election as well as other countries. There is anger brewing. And the thing about this Mars being in Cancer, I've mentioned this before, Cancer is the sign of protection and family. And let me just say, families are at odds. And even if it has nothing to do with the political realm of what's going on, it has everything to do with the core basis of any society is the family. And families are in discord and breaking up when Mars is in Cancer. Another thing Mars in Cancer can rule is real estate. So the real estate markets aren't going to change much right away while Mars is in Cancer. It's very hard to be able to own a home. But don't worry, because in a year, this will change dramatically. But for right now, I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel for the real estate market, at least right now, the end of the year. While Mars is in Cancer, Mars entered Cancer October 20th, and it will be in Cancer till January 20th. And then after it retrogrades back into the sign of Gemini, which I'll be talking about that in deep conversation with you guys. But then by March through May, Mars will be back into Cancer. So we got a little breather, but Mars being retrograde is really, really difficult. So Mars in its retrograde process is retrograde from around December 6th and 7th till about the 24th of February. But the signs it's in is what I'm talking about, being in Cancer. So there's problems with the family, there's problems with anger. But here's another thing I see that's really difficult. I've looked at so many different leaders' charts, and that's what I do when I do this full day of prediction. Even if you don't know astrology and you attend this class with me, I put it into layman's terms so you know what these charts are talking about, just as I am right now. So the charts that really perk up are China and Xi Jinping. There's he has these degrees in his chart, his moon and his K2, as well as China has Capricorn. So that axis of Capricorn and Cancer are being strongly affected. So I think there's going to be some major issues with China, with the leader, as well as, of course, I saw a lot going on with Israel. I mean to tell you, there are the prospects of danger and war this month. With Mars, when it 
first stations to turn retrograde, it makes a big announcement. Something will happen this month concerning that. Now, another thing is what I want you to know about is the fact that, well, when Mars is retrograde, or when it's in Cancer, most importantly, it is in the eighth house of the United States chart. And that's what we do as astrologers. We look at where the planets are transiting, then we put these planets in the leaders' charts as well as the country's charts. And the United States chart that I use for the signing of the Declaration of Independence. July 4th, 1776, the eighth house is where there are important planets, Mercury and Rahu. The United States is even in that the dasha of those two planets, bringing out the importance of what that means. What is the eighth house? So if we have transiting Mars in the eighth house debilitated, it is crossing over important planets there, which will bring out the eighth house's corruption secrets, big money, and of course, corruption around big money in the United States, we're going to get a lowdown of information that is going to be staggering how this has been, what's been going on, as well as the eighth house does deal with endings and death. So we're going to find an enormous change. And of course, this is reflective of the whole entire world, because what we're finding here in the politics and in the government in the United States, the uncovering of all the secrets, it's global. Guys, this is not just the U.S. that's been doing all of this and their connections with other countries. This is all coming out. It needs to come out. Enough is enough of the corruption, the deceit, the lies, and just all the negative bad things that have been permeating through the U.S. Now, I always go back. Don't think I'm just talking about one of the presidential um, terms. I'm going back to when Kennedy was assassinated. We're going to get the lowdown and the truth of what our government's really been up to. Mark my words, this is finally the time. Now, another thing that I see that is so interesting is this Mercury retrograde. Mercury turned retrograde November 25th at 28 degrees of Scorpio. Why do I find that so interesting? 28, 29 degrees of Scorpio of any water sign is actually Gandanta. And Gandanta means the last degrees, the last few degrees of water, the first degrees of fire. And what it, it always means, people become out of control. This is a time of emotional, out of control behavior. And what is it about? Mercury. Mercury rules what? The mind. It deals the thinking process, but most of all, it deals with the media and travel. So these things are coming out, being exposed and hitting the fan, as they say. <laughs> it is really coming out. Now, what I find also about 28, 29 degrees of Scorpio, this is one of the most vile parts of the Zodiac. Why? It's in the tail of the scorpion. What is the scorpion all about? That stinger. And what is that stinger about? A lot of times you can, you could say the darker side of Scorpio can deal with what? Revenge. And even the nakshatra that is part of Scorpio, the last 13 degrees, 20 minutes of Scorpio is Jasta. And Jasta deals with jealousy and revenge. So we're going to find people are trying to get revenge over these political elections, everything going on. Revenge, revenge, revenge. People have had enough. So you're going to see both sides. 
going back and forth. This is not going to be a peaceful transfer, guys. Not with this going on. So this is the end of November. Mercury is retrograde till the middle of December. And it will turn direct around December 15th. And when it does, there will be a major reversal in all of this. And thank goodness, because this is not pretty what's happening. And the things that are coming out of the media, it's revengeful, it's dirty. And a lot of it, let me remind you, will be lies. So do your research. Don't believe what you're hearing. Do your research and always listen to your gut, your gut knowing. So here is another thing that I find fascinating about this Mercury when it stations at 28 degrees of Scorpio. It is exactly on Donald Trump's natal moon, which is 28 degrees of Scorpio. And his sun sits at 29 degrees of Taurus, opposing that. But Mercury on his moon. This is going to really bring out emotional issues for Trump. Deep emotional issues. But on top of it, Mercury rules the media. They're going after him in an unruly, unprecedented way. And because Jupiter is opposed to Mercury the entire time that Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Scorpio, there is a great deal of protection. And let me say this too, Trump's chart is aligned with the stars. This couldn't have happened, the timing, everything that's going on. I've been saying it for so long. His chart totally aligned with the stars. Jupiter, the planet of opportunities, expansion, growth, positivity, is in his career house hitting his sun, aspecting his moon, and trining his Jupiter. All that is way too much to ignore as an astrologer to think that he is not going to win. So I knew that this was destined for him. Now, another thing is the entire time that I believe Jupiter is in his 10th house, close to his sun, aspecting his moon and his natal Jupiter, he is protected, even though he is in grave danger constantly. It is coming at him left and right, behind the scenes, he needs the ultra mega support and protection, which I think will work. But will there be some near misses? There can be. And I think one thing that Trump needs to be very careful of is poisoning. Why? Because Scorpio, the stinger's poison. So that's another thing. We keep thinking of guns, that type of violence, but there can be other ways they've been trying to get to him. So he needs to take great, great caution, but he'll survive. There is a mission going on with him, okay? There is a mission. He would not have survived that near assassination attempt if something wasn't up to transpire and happen here, guys. So like it or not, this is what I'm seeing because let me move on to next the full moon that also happens on the 15th of December. Yes, on the 15th of December, we have a full moon at 29 degrees of Taurus. Why am I acting so dramatic over that degree? It blew me away when I noticed it. Why? It is exactly on Donald Trump's son in the 10th house. So the full moon, which in Vedic astrology, we look at the full moon as the bright moon. It is the moon that represents power 
And most of all, when the moon is full, it brings things to fruition, to its fullness, its brightness. The full moon lights up the darkness of the night sky. So the full moon brings brightness and awareness, and it brings fruition of what occurred from the new moon two weeks later. But what's fascinating is that the moon is on Donald Trump's sun in the 10th house. The sun is your power. It's your spirit. And the moon is bringing him into awareness of his mission, his cause. Now, here's one more thing. Let me, let me talk about this. The full moon in Taurus. Taurus deals with financial aid. So his mission is to bring back the economy. Now, a full moon. The moon is also the public. It's the masses of people. And the moon in his 10th house sitting on his sun actually means that his popularity will grow. The moon, when people have the moon in their 10th house natally, it usually means they're famous in some way. Now we know Donald Trump is probably the most famous person in the world, but this brings his popularity back. Furthermore, every time the media tries to annihilate him, tries to ruin him, it will backfire because he not only has this full moon here, but he has the aspect of Jupiter there. Jupiter moon in his 10th house. That's unbelievable. Now remember his, his natal moon sits at 28 degrees of Scorpio. So when you have a sun and a moon in opposition to each other, that's a full moon. Donald Trump was born under almost a very exact full moon. His moon's at 28 Scorpio, his sun's at 29 Taurus, and with this full moon that happens on the 15th of December, this means that the moon is on his sun and the sun is on his moon. This activates not only this full moon in his chart bringing awareness and what I think I'm seeing happening, this is actually bringing momentum and like it or not, this is a new movement that is gaining energy and momentum. This is powerful. The people, the public are rallying behind him in this purpose to change, bring change to the United States, which is going to happen. So another thing is that, is that like I said, that 29 degree mark, is the mark of change, transition, anoretic degree. It is the most powerful faded degree of all. And for the next six months, all the way through April, every time there's a full moon, it will be at the 29 degree mark. This represents an incredible year of transition and change like never before. Yes, this has happened historically before, but we're going to see it happening. And most of all, from my vantage point, I'm seeing it happen astrologically. I love seeing how the stars work, how they align, and they bring the enfoldment of what is happening in the world and for most of all, humanity. So this is astounding, really. And the fact that the whole month Mercury and Jupiter are opposed to each other. But one thing I didn't mention that I feel like I need to say still is that when Mercury is retrograde and the fact that it's going to be Gandanta in the last degrees of a water sign, get ready. There's going to be some major storms as well hitting the world, not just the United States. This is, this is global. So we are coming to a point of major completion and this, there is a major movement happening for change 
in the world and in the United States. Now there's a few other things I want to talk about. Venus. Venus is going to be in Capricorn almost the whole month of December, actually from December 2nd to the 28th. And on December 7th, the first week seems to be monumental for change, but December 7th, Venus will conjunct Pluto. And whenever Venus hits Pluto, it deals with issues around betrayal, deep, dark betrayal issues. So this can actually pertain to you personally, so be aware, but globally, there are going to be deep, dark issues of betrayal, probably with governments. Why? Because it's in the sign of Capricorn, which rules government. Yes. And furthermore, soon after, I believe it's December 11th, Venus and Mars will oppose each other. And this can cause some major rifts in relationships. It could even be, be careful in your own life or family, but all at the same time it's probably dealing with some alliances that are broken with betrayal around different countries in the world. This is what I'm, I'm focusing in on in terms of world events. So another thing, December 12th, Uranus is going to go back into the sign of Aries, where it will stay till around March 19th. So it's going to be hovering around the last degree of Aries. So there's like all these degrees, anoretic degrees of finality, ending, coming to a close, but with a huge big bang and transformational change that it's all set off. And Uranus can deal with unpredictable events. So watch how things shift and things seem so uncertain and so unpredictable. But things are going to shake out. But we've got a ways to go. I'm saying all the way through to, well, next summer and then by October. But I will keep you informed because I see so many things happening month by month. But this month is monumental. It is an extreme turning point for the world, for humanity. And truly, this is a turning point for humanity. All of the things that we knew will be revealed. All the things that we suspected, in other words, were, will be revealed. And this new momentum, this movement, it will bring the change that will shift humanity. And my prayer is shift awareness and shift consciousness, making the world a more spiritually aligned place where human consciousness is actually broadening through this awareness. Consciousness and awareness, a change, an elevation through, the, through all of this turmoil. Remember what I've been saying. This was like a volcano that needed to erupt. It's like a pimple that needed to be purged because once we get all the ugliness out, the healing will begin. And that is what I'm promising you. By the turn of this next year into 2025, we will have a different world. Now that is a promise. So once again, my eternal prayer is always, may the best thing for the highest good of humanity happen now for the world. And so it is, always it is. And remember always, everything, everything in this world, even though we cannot understand it, we it doesn't make sense at the time, but everything happens for a divine reason and the good will always win out. 
So with that, I think I'll close. If you would like more information on me, you can always find everything out on my website. Go to galacticcenter.org. And if you thought, man, I love astrology. I want to learn how to be an astrologer. I have a school, an online school that you'll want to be part of. Check it out. It's called the University of Vedic Astrology. The website is university of vedicastrology.com. Thank you.